What's up everyone? In this episode, we are going to take our PNG data that's base64 encoded on the front end using the canvas element to convert from SVG to PNG. So we're gonna take that uh, data URL, we're gonna pass it back to Rails and then use that data uh, with the YouTube API to update a thumbnail. So if you recall in the last episode, we were working on automating our, uh, <laughs> our ability to create thumbnails. So I gotta restart the server here. And then once this fires back up, um, so if you recall, this is what it looked like. Um, we have at the top, this is an SVG. The second one is a canvas element. And the third one is a PNG that was exported. So if we inspect the PNG, we'll see that right now, the source of the PNG is this big, long base64 encoded data. So it's like a data URL blob that's put on the image tag. And what we wanna do is when this button is clicked, when this upload thumbnail button is clicked at the very top, we want to make an API call to our backend to upload that thumbnail. Um, and so we're gonna go do that now. So I'm gonna open up thumb.html.erb and um, the first, so yeah, at the very top, we had the video title and subtitle. I'm gonna remove those and just keep the button element for now. Um, so we're rendering out the videos thumb.svg. Uh, so if we go to the video here, so what we're doing is we are reading in the thumb base.svg.erb. So we kind of made like an ERB template, svg.erb. That is this base template. And at the top we added d3.js and d3plus.js. And then we have like a giant SVG file. And we went through and talked about how we get the font families to convert over from the SVG into the PNGs. And at the bottom, uh, we have this little script tag that just has a text wrap. So that if the font is, you'll, you'll see here, let's see, I'm gonna make that a little smaller, make this bigger again, sorry about that. Um, so right now, how, uh, how sort works in JavaScript is like going past the end there. So I wanna update this width to 1800. So now if we refresh, now you see that uh, how sort works in JavaScript. That is like the title of the video and that is the PNG that's being exported. So again, the idea is that we have a whole bunch of YouTube videos here that we're ingesting from the YouTube API. And we wanna be able to just say like, okay, when we're, when we're talking about this episode that talks about how this works in JavaScript, we should be able to automatically create a thumbnail from um, from the API using this SVG that is then generating a PNG uh, based on the data that's on the video. So right now we have the thumb SVG data. It's being rendered and converted to a PNG on the client. Now we need to go to, a, to our controller and add a method to receive this SVG file or the PNG file as data um, and then render that or like send that to YouTube. So right now we have this thumb.html.erb and it has a button. So we have this upload button. When the upload button is clicked, we are preventing default so we don't do the full page refresh. We're grabbing the thumb.png. That's the thumbnail. Um, that's this thumbnail. Uh, so notice that the ID of this is thumb-png. Okay, so thumb-png, we're grabbing the thumb-png. Then we're creating a new form data object and we're appending the thumbnail as just the source, that source attribute with all of the data. And then we are making a post request with multi-part form data in the form data object to the video path slash thumb upload. Uh, and then we're just gonna like log out the response when we get it back. So in our routes file, um, we have a new route that we need to add for post. That's gonna be thumb upload. And in our videos controller, we need a new thumb upload action here. And this is gonna be pretty interesting. So what we need to do is we need to first like extract the base64 encoded image. Then we need to decode the image data. Then what I think we wanna do is create a temp file. So create a temp file. Um, and then we want to send the file data to the YouTube API. And then finally we wanna close the temp file. And then we'll just like render back some basic 
JSON. So the very first thing we're going to do is extract the base64 encoded image. So let's just say image is params thumbnail, right? Because if we look at uh, thumb.html.erb, right? Our post request is passing the form data in this in this thumbnail attribute. And so that should be the actual source attribute. And the th for the thumbnail, we actually only want some of this. So we want, from the entire string, we need to remove this first part of it, right? We don't actually care about data colon um, image. Let's see if I can, data colon image slash PNG, data, let's see, data colon image slash PNG. So that's the mime type and then base 64 comma. We actually don't want that part. So I'm gonna say whatever the length, so here, this is gonna be a string, right? And then we're, we're getting a substring that's it, that is starting after this point in the string and going up until the very end. So that should give us the encoded image data. Then we wanna decode the image with base64.decode64, and we're gonna pass in the image data. That should give us a decoded image. Next, we wanna create a temp file. So we're gonna just say file is temp file.new, and we can pass in an array where the, the, the last element of the array is the extension. So we want this to be a PNG. And then the first element, uh, we want, I don't know, some identifier or something. So let's just use time.now.2i.2s uh, so that we have some sort of name. Um, and then finally, we want to send the data to the YouTube API. And we want to say like file.close, file.unlink. And I'll need to remember some of these temp file things, but file.bin mode is true because we're using binary file dot um, write decode decoded image. Let's rename this to decoded image, decoded image. And then file dot rewind. Um, let's just look and see temp file Ruby. I need to remember and make sure that I'm using the right stuff here. So temp file is going to just create a temporary file on the operating system. And the things that we care about here are um, we, we create the file, then we want to make sure that we close it and unlink it. So we did we do that? Close and unlink, good. And then what else do we need here? How do we write to it? Hmm. How do we write to the file? Oh, here, yeah, just dot write. Okay, and then yeah, we just give it a string. Okay, so I think bin mode, is that actually right? Bin, bin mode. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's a thing, but I don't know, because we want it to be in binary mode. And then ultimately, we need to send the file to the YouTube data API, YouTube data API for thumbnails. So let's go to the reference and let's look at thumbnails set. Okay, so we wanna pass it as an image PNG. So actually let's go look at our YouTube service. So in our YouTube service, we previously wrote some wrapper code around the YouTube API. Right now we only have fetch videos that gives us a list of videos paginated and we have update video, which syncs to the video. And at the bottom we have two helpers. One is for initializing an instance of the YouTube service and the second is for initializing an instance of the client, given the credentials for the session, which is injected when we initialize YouTube. So let's let's make a new uh, a new YouTube service object. So in the videos controller, in the thumb upload down here, let's say y is equal to YouTube.new, and then YouTube session last should give us our last session. That'll pass in and initialize the session. Then we want to call something like y.set thumbnail and we want to pass in the video and the file. But right now we don't have the video yet. So I'm realizing that we need to also, well, okay, because routes, because this is a member route under post thumb upload, um, then watch this. So if we go to thumb, .html.erb, right? Like the, the fetch, the URL that we're using is the video path. So this will be like slash video slash one slash thumb upload. And that one will be available or should be available, I think, as like params ID. 
So we want to say like uh, video is equal to video dot find params ID. It might need to be params video ID. I'm not sure, but that should give us the video object because we're gonna when we call set thumbnail, we need to know which YouTube ID to use, and we need to know the file. I think. Um, so let's go back to our YouTube service, and we'll add a new method here called set thumbnail. And it'll take in the video and the file. And we're gonna reuse our existing service object, right? Because that's created for us down here. So I'm gonna say um, service dot, and we need to figure out what the actual method is. So YouTube API GitHub. Hmm. Last index 19 days ago, whatever. Let's just look at this one. So set thumbnail takes in the video ID and okay. So let's just call service dot set thumbnail, right? Because uh, service is an instance of um, YouTube service. So let's just make sure we're calling this on the right class. Wow. This is a big class class. Yeah. Okay. So we're in YouTube service. So that's good. Set thumbnail. So we, we need the video ID and then we need um, the upload source, which is going to be the file. And then we need some options with our credentials. Um, okay. So set thumbnail, we're going to give it video dot YouTube ID. That's going to be our YouTube video ID. We're also going to give it upload source is going to be the file and content type is image slash PNG, I think. And then options is the same as these options here. <clears throat> okay. All right. So, so we've got our YouTube, this is going to be our API call to YouTube to upload the file. And over here we are extracting the base 64 encoded image. We're decoding the image. We're creating a new temp file. We're writing the file. Then we're rewinding it so that we can reread it as we are streaming the data to YouTube. And then after that's done, we will close and unlink. We should probably wrap this in like a begin. Um, finally, do we have finally or ensure? It's ensure in, uh, in Ruby. Okay. Just in case there's a, a failure on the API, we want to make sure we're closing out the temp files and not leaving them hanging around. Um, okay, so what's next here is that we need to test it out. Uh, okay, so we go back to our video animations tab here and let's let's actually go to the sources and add some breakpoints so that we can walk through this. So, yeah, so see this, this ID here should work for us. We got multi-part form data. Um, let's break there and click upload thumbnail. All right. So we have the source that looks cool. Um, that's all of our data that we care about, right? Uh, or like that's the URL, the data URL, um, that's embedded in the, the PNGs source. So now we're going to make a post request with multi-part form data. I think, Hmm, this might need to be application JSON. I don't remember. And then we're passing the form data and then let's just go for it. We c okay, so play and something failed. So let's take a look. Uh, undefined method square bracket for nil class. Is it not called thumbnail? What did we call it? Oh, is it not supposed to be multi-part form data? Let's see. Thumb. Um, let's actually just leave out the content type. Since we're passing form data, I think it should just know what we're talking about here. Uh, maybe. Let's see. Okay. Clear that out. Click upload thumb. All right. We get a 500 N undefined method bin mode. Okay. So this was not a real thing. Videos controller. Uh, let's take that out. Refresh. Click upload thumb 500. Okay. So, Hmm. File. Okay, so there's some sort of temp file bin mode thing. Maybe it's not a setter. File.bin mode. 
refresh, clear. Oh, yes. Okay. So we got no content back, but this in JavaScript, this in JavaScript, this in JavaScript. So let's go back to this, this video, video 13. If we open this up in YouTube and click edit video, we see our new thumbnail. Awesome. Super cool. So this in JavaScript, awesome. So that's not actually what we want it to be. We want it to be the title. We want the title be, to be like how this works in JavaScript. And maybe, yeah, maybe we can just keep the ticks, um, keep the ticks there. And then the subtitle is maybe like uh, JavaScript uh, fundamentals. And then if we click uh, update video, now our thumbnail should be different. Right, so the thumbnail now has JavaScript fundamentals as the subheading. Then we have how this works in JavaScript as nice and big. I don't know if I want the ticks or like technically I want this to be a different font, but right now the SVG that we're using or like the style that we're using doesn't support multiple. It's pretty rudimentary. Um, but if we click upload thumbnail and wait a few seconds and then refresh this page, we should have, yeah, boom, brand new epic thumbnail. So that is how you can take, uh, you know, base 64 encoded PNG data and pass it to your Rails application, upload that to YouTube and use that as your, your thumbnail data. So hopefully that is helpful uh, in the next episode. So yeah, I think in the next episode, what makes the most sense is to try like right now, the videos um, or like these, the subheading and heading for these videos is based on just like a string that I'm writing directly into the subtitle here. What I think I really want to do is just create a series so you can select from, all right, which, which series is this video a part of? And then maybe also add support for managing playlists here so that when you are uh, editing the video in this application, you can pick which playlists on YouTube it should go to. That'll require that we use the YouTube data API for playlists and that we list them. Um, and yeah, but I think that would be cool because then you can do other things with the series. Like the series could have different fonts or different colors or different like background color or something, um, or even like a different SVG template. And so, yeah, I think the next part of this video series is going to be breaking out the concept of what is a series and um, maybe even allowing uh, managing um, playlists. So we'll see. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, let me know in the comments below how you're going to use it or uh, yeah, um, ha super happy to help and share as I'm learning all of this cool stuff about the YouTube API. All right. Bye friends.